Hello, this is Mr. Wynn, and this video is solving compound and absolute value inequalities. So, in compound inequality is two inequalities combined by the word and or the word or. So, for the left side, we see x is greater than or equal to negative 2, and x is less than 3. Um, all ands can be combined like this. We'd say negative 2 is less than or equal to x, or less than 3. Make sure the signs are always like this, facing the same way, less than and less than. You could do greater than, greater than, but that's really ugly. Um, and as you can see in the picture, it's shaded in the middle. It's between negative 2 and 3. And one side could be open, one side could be closed, or both closed, or both open. Um, one more thing I want to say is, oh, I'll come back in a second. On the right side, we have or. X is less than negative 3, or X is greater than 4. So I went to negative 3, shaded left, because the letter's smaller. And then the other part's or. X is greater than 4. So the letter's bigger, shades to the right at 4. Um, use common sense here. You know if you had a chores from your parents say you had to clean your room and take out the trash. If you just did one thing, that's not good enough. You get in trouble. But if they said or, like to clean your room or take out the trash, you have to do one thing, you're fine. So for and, they have to overlap. They have to meet. So what I mean is this. This first one, if I just graph this right here, I'd go to negative 2, make it close, shade right, because it goes forever. And the other one, this right here, I go to 3, open, I'd shade to the left. So think of the green one as like you taking out your trash and the blue one's you clean your room. Well, you had to do both of them, clean your room and take out the trash. So the only part that counts would be this overlap, this middle part. We don't care about this side where you only took out the trash. That's not good enough. We don't care about this part where you only took clean your room. That's not good enough. All right, so that's going to explain the next part. So anyways, uh, to solve, you separate the two inequalities and solve each normally. Then you graph and shade them both on the same number line. You put the two graphs together on the same picture. All right, and then uh, the answer to an and is the overlap or intersection of the shading. And the answer to an or is the entire shading. It doesn't matter. You can do both. You can do one, and you're fine. Um, side notes, ands usually have the middle or center shaded, kind of like the left picture. And ors usually have the outside shaded. So I remember the O and or matches the O and outsides. And uh, you can check by picking any point in the shaded area and plugging into the original inequality. It should make it true, just like before. Um, there is a warning. That is, if an and inequality has no overlap shading, then there's no solution, because you never did both things assigned to you. You didn't clean your room and took out the trash. If an or inequality overlaps, you may be able to use just one inequality, the bigger one, if it automatically takes care of or gobbles up the other inequality. Like, for example, if you're greater than 5 and also you're greater than 1, well, gr anything greater than 1 automatically um, will eventually take care of all things greater than 5. All right. So let's start. Let's solve this. So I remember it says split it up into two equations. Now this is an and. I like mentioning this first. I like identifying it. it's an and because it's together. You see something less than something else, less than something else. Ands are supposed to be the middle, the overlap. So this is good to know. And uh, this left side is open, this right side is closed. Just keep that in mind for later. So the way you break the two equations is very simple. The left and middle is one equation. So here's the one right here. So 8 less than 3y minus 7. And the other equation is the middle and the right one right here. So 3y minus 7 less than equal to 23. So solve each like normal. So the first one, I'm going to add 7. 15 less than 3y. Then I'm going to divide by 3, 5 less than y. Same thing over here. So let's first add 7. 3y less than equal to 30. Then divide by 3, y is less than or equal to 10. So you see how y is bigger than 5 and less than or equal to 10. So it's between 5 and 10. We can't tell. We're going to graph this. And when you graph, you must have the numbers you got. Make sure the smaller one's on the left. So 5 is first, 10 is second. And I'm going to do all three, but y'all can take a shortcut. So the first one is bigger than 5. So open up 5, go on right. The second one is close at 10 and smaller, so going left. The overlap is this middle. So all you have to graph is the middle part. So it's open here, closed here, and shade in the middle. All right, now you must always combine your final answer back together. So don't give me two inequalities unless you have the word and in between, because and doesn't disappear. So you can say this right here, this and that. Or what's better is you can say, 5 less than y less than 10, with the 10 being closed. All right, so that's the same thing. All ands can be combined together. 
Also, we could do interval notation, remember? How far left? We're going to 5, but it is open. And it goes all the way to 10, but 10 is closed. This is any number between 5 and 10. Or we could even do set notation. We can say y equals a set of all y values such that this inequality is true. There you go. So any of that works. But I need the picture and one of those four things. One of uh, these four things I box. Or sometimes they ask you for a specific question, a specific method format. All right, so that's the and. And I notice it's middle shaded. This next one's an or. Now, ors are obvious. Ors actually have the word or in the middle. So there's no two forms. So for ands, they might give you the word and, or they might give you the combined thing already. For ors, you must see the word or. So ors are super obvious. So you just solve each one like normal. So for this first one, I'm going to subtract 6. So k is less than negative 10. And then I'm going to divide by 3 here. So k is greater than 14 over 3. All right, you graph both at the same time. Now I'm expecting them to be the outsides, but we'll see. Sometimes they overlap. The small one first, negative 10 is smaller. The positive fraction is obviously bigger. For negative 10, I'm open, and k is less, left. Letter smaller, go left. All right, on the other one, k is oh open again, and k is greater, so right. So which is the outside, so there's a picture. Now you had to write this thing, so we can say, make sure the word or, so I'll do this. k is less than negative 10, or k is greater than 14 over 3. That's one way of doing it. We can also do interval notation. This one's a little trickier. So for the first piece, we go left forever, negative infinity. And then we go all the way to negative 10, but we don't count negative 10. It's not closed, it's open. And then we have the word or. When there's a gap you skip, you use this u, meaning union or with, so or. The next piece is we start at 14 over 3, open, all the way to positive infinity. And that's it there. And if you do the set notation, you could do the same thing. You could say uh, k is the set of all k values such that this <laughs> inequality is true. That or that. So any of those work. All right, now time for absolute value. Absolute value inequalities are actually compound inequalities, since y'all know the absolute value problems have two cases or problems, the positive and negative cases. Um, I strongly recommend memorizing this chart to figure out if the absolute value is an and or or, because that's the most confusing part. And like shading, when shading inequalities, think of it in the perspective of absolute value. So this first side is the and. And I always think the absolute value must be smaller. So here, this absolute value x is less than the number, absolute value smaller. This other one, this absolute value, is still less than a number, right? They might write it backwards to trick you. So when a number is greater than absolute value, that's still an and. And remember, for ands, you should be shading in the middle because you're looking for the overlap, right? And uh, also the middle, if you think of a number line, let me draw it fast. The middle doesn't get any bigger. It's just from here to here. I mean, it has a lot of numbers between it, but if you do the outsides, the outsides go forever to the right and forever to the left. See that? So the outsides are bigger than the inside. So when the absolute value is less, smaller, it's the middle of the inside, the smaller area. All right, so use that same idea for the ors. We use absolute value is greater, is bigger. So when absolute value is bigger than any number thing, it's or. Uh, same thing when they have backwards, number less than the absolute value, this absolute value is still bigger. Always look in the perspective of x. All right, so when the absolute value is more, it's or. And also I remember more, or, because the uh, or is in the word more. So I usually say bigger or more, I don't really say greater than. And also, like I said earlier from the picture, there are more numbers on the outside. The O and outside goes with the O and or, because this goes on forever, this to the left, this goes on forever to the right, or reverse that, that goes forever to the left, the other one goes forever to the right. Anyways, like for you can always check by picking a point in the shade area, plug in, it should make the original problem true. All right, let's do some problems. So, absolute value of x plus 2 uh, is less than 5. So hopefully you know it has to be between, the left side has to be between negative 5 and positive 5, and smaller. So like 1 be good, because absolute value of positive 1 comes out positive 1. So anyways, I'm identify. This is absolute value less. See, this thing is less. So less means and. And means middle. 
or uh, overlap, right? I'm gonna write the two problems. I like method two here, because method one has a trick to it. And I wrote it right here. If you use method one for solving absolute value, you must flip the inequality when you multiply the right side by negative one for the negative case. But if you use my uh, method two, you just go straight to doing it. So I do positive one, parentheses, x plus two, less than five, and then negative one, parentheses, x plus two, less than five. Because method two doesn't make you uh, multiply the right side, and you don't have to flip. So remember, all the numbers, size stay the same, just a positive one and negative one. So I distribute, which was no change, and then I subtract two, I get this. Over here, I distribute, negative x minus two. I'm gonna add two. Then I'm gonna divide by negative one. Now I am divided by negative, so I must flip the sign. So this is where the sign flips. So if you did the method one, you should flip the sign at the very beginning. All right, if I graph these two together, there's just a meet in the middle, so I'm gonna kind of just eyeball it. So we have negative seven smaller, positive three is bigger. Um, for positive three, it's open, and we're going left. For negative seven, we're open, and we're going right. So this is the middle. So we're gonna say uh, combine the two, or write the word and. Make sure the sign's less than less. So those are left number less than x less than right number. It was closed with the equal sign. So there we go, those two together. If you use set notation, or let's do interval notation first. This is between negative seven and three, open for both. Um, we also could do set notation. We could say x is a set of all x is such that, or the condition that this inequality is true. All right, in the last slide. So I absolute value x minus three is greater than or equal to 10. No, actually, I didn't check in this case, but you could plug in any point, for example, zero, and plug it in and make it true. So let me check it first. So absolute value zero plus two should be less than five. Well, that's absolute value two should be less than five. Well, that's two is less than five. That's true. So see, zero works. Zero is somewhere in between here, not drawn to scale. It's in the shaded area. Anyways, solving this. So I'm going to do method two. Again, it's my favorite. So positive one, absolute, uh, parentheses x minus three. 10 and then negative 1 parentheses x minus 3 sign stays the same number stays the same solve each regular algebra distribute add 3 and that's it over here distribute negative x plus 3 subtract 3 this time divide by negative 1 because we're dividing by negative the sign flips all right, this is a or, so I should identify that right away. I remember we should be looking at the outside. We don't care about the overlap. So let's graph it. It's throwing me off, all right. Remember, small number on the left, so let's see, 13, negative seven, negative seven smaller, 13 is bigger. Um, they're both closed, so be careful here. So for the 13, close, X is bigger, so we're going right. And if other one negative seven, closed. X is small, we're going left. All right, remember you cannot combine this, so you can just say, uh, you just put an or, so X is less than equal to negative seven, or X is greater than equal to 13. That's all you need. You could do interval notation, so it goes left forever, negative infinity, all the way to negative seven, closed, or, or with, with a U, so it just means or. The right section is it starts at 13, and it goes all the way right pause infinity. You could do set notation if you want. This letter is x, so x is the set of all x's such that x is less than or equal to negative 7 or x is greater than or equal to 13. Alright, any of those work. Alright, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you ask questions in class. See you in class. Bye.